Okay. I'll record as well. Okay. And I'll send you time reminders in the chat. All right, sounds good. Okay. So Neil, how's it going today? Very good. Yeah, great. I'm really, really encouraged by the reaction to the film that that we're getting. I hope it's not all uh I was all genuine because people seem to genuinely really like it. That's awesome. Well, I gotta say, I love the movie. Um, this is my this is one of my favorite types of films, the story of the redemption, but yet you get the flashbacks within the story of how everything came into play and mixed in with the present day. And this is exactly the type of film I absolutely love. So, and you were just amazing in it. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's nice. Very kind. And as I say, generally people seem to be liking it, which is really exciting for us. It's a very small film, you know. Yes. How did how did you get involved with the with the film? Um, I knew Paul. Uh, Paul made a film like 16, 17 years ago called London to Brighton. That a friend of mine, Johnny Harris, was in. Um, and I met Paul, I think, around that time or just after that. And um and I loved that film. That was sort of a similar genre film. It was like a chase movie, really. But that, again, had that social realist angle to it. And I was like, like what you say, I was, this is totally up my street. And then I met Paul around and we got on really well, stayed in touch. He invited me to screenings of his subsequent films. And he's a really eclectic filmmaker. You know, Song for Marion's totally different. And did a movie called Cherry Tree Lane, which is like a Hitchcock <laughs> uh, real-time movie that's fantastic. And we've been threatening to work together for years and years. And then I bumped into him in the street. And he was like, oh, I've got this film. I really want you to do it. And I thought, you know, yeah, it's very difficult to get the money always to make films. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't know if it had happened or not. And then within a year, he'd sent the script over and whatever it was, really, if it, you know, even if it had been a, a smaller role and not the lead, I would have done it just to, for the opportunity to work with Paul. So I was really flattered that he'd written this great part with me in mind. You know, it was exciting. Yeah. And what I liked about the film was it reminded me of a re another recent film that came out a few years back called Avengement, which is also a British gangster film with Scott Atkins, where he was this tough guy who just got out of prison and he tells a story of how his brother used him and seen him flashbacks where his brother set him up in prison to get like brutalized. Oh, and, oh, and, I'm gonna have to look out for that. Okay. <laughs> and when he gets out, he's now seeking revenge on his brother and his whole gang, and it's all set and everything's set in a pub where he tells a story and you get all the flashbacks. And what was I liked about this one was that yours your story was different, where it was your father-in-law who was your boss, and he was the you know, he's the main antagonist here. And David Heyman was just vicious in this. Yeah, he's I mean, right. You were the vicious anti-hero, but he was, the, he was like the more, he was even more vicious because he, he could be a nice guy one second, but then he's just like brutal the next. It's a horrible performance and it's great. You know? <laughs> so what was it like working with David on that movie, on the movie? Oh, really exciting. I've liked David for years. You know, I'd seen him in A Sense of Freedom, which I think was in about 1982 or something. I mean, I didn't see it in 1982, but I saw that years later um, and loved that. And he directed a film called uh, Silent Scream with Ian Glenn in the late 80s or early 90s that I loved. I think the first day I met David, I overwhelmed him a little bit by knowing quite so much about his career and his previous work. Uh, it's like, who's it this lunatic stalker that I, you know, I had all these things I was rattling off. So I knew that I was getting to work with someone that I'd all, always admired. And then the way he played the part um, was so unusual. And, you know, his confidence personally as an actor that comes from his experience as much as anything, that meant that he knew that he could kind of almost back foot a lot of it and, um, you know, not push too hard, just let the action and the behaviours of the character do the work, really, um, that makes it all the more chilling and unsettling his performance. It was like that in the room. It's not just like that on screen. Yeah. You know, it felt like you wanted to go home and have 10 baths after working with, <laughs> with Norm all day, you know? Yeah, I hear that. And speaking of the action, Man, this was some of the most brutal action I've seen in this type of genre in a long time. I mean, you yeah. just like, you just dealt like so much like blood and gore and, you know, chopping things off, man. 
Like, yeah. How, what was that like from your viewpoint? You must have had like a blast getting to do stuff like that. Yeah, it's great. I mean, actually, you know, the truth is when you shoot violence, um, that's not always the most exciting stuff for an actor because all of a sudden it becomes quite logistical when you're working with the makeup and you're having to get the angle right. You know, the exciting stuff actually is just dialogue. So like, for instance, when I'm with Jay Simpson, the heroin dealer whose arm I end up chopping off, mm -hmm. you know, the exciting stuff as actors is the all the stuff leading up to that where I'm opposite him and he's talking about playing football and, and um, you know, being better than all the youngsters that he plays with and all that stuff and watching him do that crazy performance, which I love, I think it's a real highlight of the movie. Is, is maybe more exciting than sort of cauterizing his wound on the, the hob. Yeah. Um, but that's more like when you get to the end of a day and you've been shooting that stuff, you're like, fucking hell, that's going to look great. You know, it's really going to make some stomachs turn. Oh, yeah. Um, that was some violent stuff. But you, when you're actually doing it, it's really about the angles and the logistics of it. So maybe it's less, you know, people think it's like running around shooting guns is exciting. But again, generally you get... Health and safety is what dominates those days, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just like it's just like watching a you know like a fight scene where you know yeah, it's that you get the tension that builds up to the actual fight, and then bam, you know it happens, and then you're finally like, okay, I'm good, we're good. Let's yeah, just, let's just move on. And it's all about the move, you know, and each bit of it. It's sort of that's when everything weirdly in the most the the stuff that's fast to watch and very frenetic and exciting is obviously the slowest and most sort of broken up stuff to shoot it's uh there's there's a, a contradiction to that that's quite mad actually that's awesome so how long did you shoot the film for and on your viewpoint did you find anything difficult in terms of you know do we have to do this or you could have done better somewhere or you felt like everything was just as it just as well as so it was great. I mean, we only had three weeks to shoot it. So it was very, very, very fast. But and that can be difficult. And at times, you you know, you're you're you might be scared, actually, that you're not going to get a scene or you're you might have to cut a whole scene off the end of the day. So you're sort of racing. And as an actor, sometimes that can be distracting that you're aware of how much time you've got left and what you what it is you'd like to get to, because you don't want that scene to get dropped and you don't want to end up not having that scene for the film. And yeah. but for all of that particularly on a film that's as fast, messy and brutal as Ball is anyway, that's immersive. You know, that makes the, the, the energy that you've actually got shooting the film, you're bringing to the performance, you know, that's always there. Sort of that nervous energy and tension is bubbling without you having to do a lot of work to get hold of it. On a film like you, some films where you've got a lot of time, you might have to work to actually build up to that if you've got big right. gaps between each take or big gaps between each setup. But when you're throwing the camera around and trying to grab all this stuff as fast as you can, that energy um, is really helpful when you're playing a character like Ball, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. So what is next for you that you could talk about now that Ball's going to be coming out this week in the U.S.? Uh, I've written and directed a film um, called Klockenluder, which is a Dutch word that means, well, means whistleblower. Um, it actually means bell ringer, but that's the word they use for whistleblower. That's like a whistleblower political thriller that's uh, almost about a kind of Snowden type character um, who's got a secret that he, he wants to tell a journalist and the newspapers send him and his wife are hiding out in the Belgian countryside and they send two close protection security guards to watch over them. And it's really about what unfolds in the relationship between the security guards and the whistleblower and his wife before the journalist turns up and changes everything, which I'm describing as like the conversation meets the Muppet show. So it's got a sort of blackly comic element to it. Nice. And then I've just done a series about the murder of Alexander Litvinenko um, in, in London and uh, obviously, that's horribly more prescient now than it was even when we were making it. Incredibly yeah. relevant to, um, you know, the terrible events that we're seeing happening in the news. But, actually, but you know, actually is as well as I think being fascinating and a really well made series is really informative and useful to people if they want to understand how much Russian money and influence had infiltrated London and, uh, and politics in England. Yeah. Yep, I hear that. So yeah. Bull is coming out in select theaters this Friday, April first, and I'm not. It's not an April Fool's joke, guys. But I will say this: you're going to have a hell of a ride with this movie. 
if you love the British gangster film Amped Up with some great flashbacks, you're definitely going to want to see this one. And Neil, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Thanks so much for, for your enthusiasm about the film, mate. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope you stay safe and take care. Peace. All right. See you.